Do you know that 8 hours sleep, the golden rule we've been told to follow for years, might not be true? Recent research and evolving insights into sleep patterns have led experts to question this conventional wisdom. Today, we'll be debunking this wildly held belief and discussing the actual way to get better sleep. You see, the duration of sleep the body requires varies from person to person. While 8 hours may be suitable for some, others may function optimally with a little less or a bit more. Your sleep needs depend on various functions such as age, genetics, lifestyle, and overall health. Andrew Huberman, a renowned neuroscientist who is captivating the world with his groundbreaking research, talks about how an 8-hour sleep is bad for you. He is a professor of neurobiology and ophthalmology at Stanford University. His research focuses on the inner workings of the brain and how it can adapt and change in response to your daily experiences. Chronically, oversleeping can lead to a feeling of grogginess throughout the day, affecting productivity and potentially increasing the risk of conditions like obesity and diabetes. On the other hand, consistently getting too little sleep can result in cognitive deficits, mood swings, and compromised immune function. Andrew Huberman talks about research conducted by a fellow researcher at Stanford. This study found that feeling excited and positive about what's going to happen the next day can help improve the quality of sleep, even if the amount of sleep is not very long. Another study was carried out by Emily Hoagland in collaboration with Bob Stickhold's lab at Harvard Medical School. This study focused on how well people performed in organic chemistry, which is a challenging subject. Emily Hoagland looked at different groups of motivated students as part of the study. What the study revealed is that having a consistent amount of sleep each night was more important for doing well on exams than simply getting more sleep overall. So, it's not just about getting more sleep to perform better, it is actually better to have a regular sleep duration. Surprisingly, you might do better on a test after 6 hours of consistent sleep compared to 8 hours of inconsistent sleep. There are a couple of other factors that also play a significant role in succeeding in this area. For instance, your entire life waking or asleep is broken up into these 90-minute ultradian cycles. When you look at the ability to focus, solve math problems, drive an automobile, or do any task, your performance usually improves gradually over a 90-minute period, reaches its highest point, and then decreases as the 90-minute period ends. During sleep, we experience various stages such as stages 1 to 4 and REM, rapid eye movement sleep. Ending your sleep after a 90-minute cycle or close to the end of one, like finishing 6 hours of sleep, is often more beneficial than sleeping for an extra hour and waking up during the middle of one of these natural 90-minute cycles. Several apps are available that can track these patterns using body movements and other indicators. These apps set off your alarm when a natural 90-minute cycle completes. If you wake up in the middle of one of these cycles, you might feel quite tired for a significant duration. How you feel throughout the day is also a crucial factor. Most people encounter a decrease in energy during the late afternoon, which corresponds to a peak in body temperature. This time of day is ideal for taking a nap of around 90 minutes or less. If you are not someone who takes naps or if you are unable to nap, an alternative is to raise your feet. This practice helps in flushing out waste from the glymphatic system, which functions like the brain's sewer system. Andrew Huberman has been researching something called NSDR, which stands for Non-Sleep Deep Rest. It involves lying down and letting your body enter very calm states. This not only improves your ability to fall asleep later, but also offers rejuvenating effects on cognitive and motor skills. According to him, there is a study from Denmark that shows that a 20-minute session of non-sleep deep rest can restore neuromodulators like dopamine to the levels observed right after a full night's sleep. This effect occurs in the basal ganglia, a brain region responsible for motor planning and action. Andrew Huberman disagrees with the idea that you can't recover lost sleep. If you find yourself feeling drowsy or nodding off during the day, it is actually a sign of possible insomnia, indicating insufficient nighttime sleep. If you are experiencing daytime fatigue without actually dozing off, meaning you are tired but not falling asleep during meetings or conversations, it is likely that something other than sleep is wearing out your body. Andrew Huberman recommends a 20-minute nap as a way of rejuvenate and recharge your energy. However, he advises against opting for a nap lasting 90 minutes or more, as this might lead to entering the REM sleep stage and potentially result in feeling disoriented when you wake up. When you lack sufficient sleep, there is a possibility of quickly entering the RAM stage when you finally doze off. For instance, when you are jet-lagged from traveling, you might find yourself falling asleep almost instantly. 
If sleeping or napping is challenging for you, an alternative approach involves learning to achieve maximum relaxation in your body. This means trying to make your facial expressions neutral and allowing your body to feel almost weightless as if it is gently floating. Creating a consistent sleep routine, avoiding stimulants close to bed, and practicing relaxation techniques such as deep breathing or meditation can immersely help in improving sleep quality. Additionally, exposing yourself to natural daylight during the day and limiting exposure to blue light from electronic devices at night can optimize your body's circadian rhythm. Now remember, it is all about finding what works best for your body and giving it the rest it truly deserves. That's all for today. What are your thoughts on Andrew Huberman's perspective? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Until next time, stay curious and sleep tight.